Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Carla. In today's video, I wanted to break down a little bit how I study as a neuroscience student so you guys can get some tips and improve your study habits, your study routines, and hopefully retain more information in the long term. All right, so to start off, I always like to think about how it is that we actually learn. So I think everybody has a different style of learning, but what's true for everybody is that they have to encode the information to be able to learn it. So they have to receive the information, the knowledge from somewhere before they can commit it to long-term memory. And it's really important that in this step you are giving your complete and undivided attention to the task at hand because if not, you're not going to get a clear grasp of what the story is. And I really like to think about studying as a collection of stories. If you're studying science, there's a story of what's going on. For maths, it's a bit different, but at the same time, there's a pattern, there's something that is consistent. History, of course, stories, poli-sci, there's all these different types of stories that people tell in the form of lectures. So if you're completely focused focused and not distracted when you're studying, it's more likely that you're going to be able to commit it to long-term memory and that you're going to have a clear story about what the main purpose of what you're studying is. What I usually try to do is read the lectures before class or try to watch a video about what it is that we're going to be talking about in class. Usually you can look into the syllabus and see what the topics are and just go over it a little bit so I have some background information. And especially so when I listen to it in lecture the first time, it's not my first time listening to it. I often find that I have difficulty in lecture if I get lost on like one detail or I don't understand what one word means or like what one process is I don't completely remember, then I get lost for the rest of the lecture. If I look at the material before class, it's just a lot easier to encode overall because then we're just listening to the story over and over again when we're in lecture and then later on when we're studying. And if you interrupt encoding, you're gonna spend longer and longer amounts of time trying to understand and commit the same topic to long-term memory than if you would have just focused completely with your undivided attention the first time. So I have a general structure for how I study. First, I read or watch something that's related to the material before class. Then I go to class. And it's really important to go to class because the lecturers are often more familiar with the topics than you are and it's gonna be easier for them to explain things to you if you have questions right away. So I always go to class and then we move on to studying. And hopefully this is a review from the two times that I've already heard it. And the point here is to really reinforce the topics and to correct any misunderstandings or mistakes that I consistently keep making. I like to just represent the material the best way that I understand it. So if it's like a one-way process, like glycolysis, I wrote down all the steps and I would repeat it to myself, repeat it to myself, repeat it to myself, and I tried to make a story out of it overall. But drawing pictures is an excellent way to visualize processes overall and a great way to instill the information, hopefully maintain it and keep it in the long term. And if you notice you're making any consistent mistakes, that's the perfect time to take a second, Google it, and then try to figure it out by drawing it. And if you're not really understanding how connections are being made. This is why I keep drawing pictures because the more pictures I draw the more clear understanding I have of the topic. There's different ways to do this. You don't necessarily have to draw pictures. Um, a lot of my friends they do summaries and I've tried summaries myself as well. I like to keep everything that we reviewed from the lecture on one sheet of papers. So when I'm doing practice questions, testing myself, I can refer to the one page or the summary of everything that we talked about in that class. But I try to make it in my own words. I try to explain the topics when I'm doing the summary sheet. All right, so after we move on to this, then we have to test ourselves. Test ourselves is one of the, like the best ways to understand and learn material. And I've often heard that we should start testing ourselves right away, but I find difficulty in starting right away because I haven't encoded the information information yet. So I think it's really important to have a balance between encoding and testing it's because testing yourself is really hard without the encoding and if we encode for too long and then we waste time before the test comes up. A tip that I usually use is that I try to set a limit of time when I'm encoding the information so hopefully since we've already looked at our summary of how everything goes we already have two times in which we're encoding the information by the time that we're in our study zone we should already be able to ask ourselves questions. But sometimes if we're not doing the first two steps so actively and we're just sitting and passively absorbing the information we're gonna have to spend time in encoding properly. So there are ways to ask questions that are gonna help you understand the material better. And generally, how I like to do this is I like to explain first to myself what it is that we're studying. And then right away when I notice that I'm like, wait, I don't understand how this works. How does this work? That's when you have a question. So a lot of people, they like to put it in question banks. They like to use Quizlet. They like to use Anki. They like to use just flashcards, ways to actively test yourself. But 
to find these questions, you have to go through the material first. You don't always have to spend time putting together the questions. Maybe somebody has already done this or you can do it in conjunction with someone else, but it's really important to encode the information first of all and find a balance between asking and testing yourself and encoding. And lastly, there's been kind of a trend through all of this. We keep repeating the material and to repeat and repeat and repeat the material that you're going over to yourself in different ways, in different shapes and forms essentially, so you can grasp it better. I took this neuroanatomy course around a year ago at this point Point. And the way that the professor did it is that she had a PowerPoint in which she put in all the concepts She put pictures then we moved on she would repeat the key and core concepts through the class She would have us say it. She'd have us write it down. She'd have us draw it It's important to have some repetition with the material you're working with because it's gonna help you commit it to long-term memory better The connections that are being made in your brain when you're studying when you're learning become stronger with repetition. It's like a muscle. If you do a hundred, you know, bicep curls on one arm and you don't do it on the other one, which one's gonna get stronger? The one that you did a hundred on or the one that you didn't? It kind of makes more sense if you think of your brain as a muscle. And the more you practice a specific activity, the stronger it gets. Physically, it gets thicker in some areas and the connections that you're making, the neural connections, are also growing. You're having more of them. All right, so hopefully these tips really help you get better grades in the future, understand more material overall, and Please don't forget to like this video before you go if you found any of these tips helpful. Also, don't forget to subscribe and leave me a comment if you have any special tips that could help somebody else. I'm sure other people would also benefit from your study tips, so leave them down in the comments below. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. See, this is where I should have been sitting, but I wasn't because the table is too small. She's a Mona Lisa Everyone's lining up to see her